Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, and I am Lord of the Arena. Hmm. What else do we have here? So, let's start a new run. I have actually done a couple of runs since the patch, and it's been alright. Actually, it's been going okay. I went 9-2 with a pally. Can't really complain about that. Did a decent set, I think it was 5-3 with a priest with four Northshire clerics. That wasn't too bad. But it looks like we have some of the least changed classes available here. We've got Jaina Proud, more the Mage, Gul down the Wall, like a more Fury and the Storm Rage. I know. I'm going to have just upset a bunch of WoW lore grognards, which is fine by me. That was the intention, do not worry. Malfury in the Storm Rage, some kind of anime character. Gul'dan, hmm, I, I do like playing Warlock. I really, really do. Although, admittedly, some of the synergies required to make Warlock work really well, such as power overwhelming, void terror bombs, and things like that, are a little trickier to get in an arena deck. Mages, I just think, are rock solid across the board, and Druids are pretty good too. I haven't played too much of the Druid, though, so I'd like to play more. So let's, let's do Druid. Druid actually got nerfed a little bit, strangely enough, in the patch. There are a few things about the Druid that are apparently just that little bit overpowered, so they tweaked it around a little bit. We'll see if we run into them. They're not major changes, certainly not compared to what they did to the Rogue, but... Alright, let's start it off, shall we? Ancient Mage, Twilight Drake, and Ravenholt Assassin. So, there's something that got nerfed pretty hard, as you can see. This used to be gain plus one, plus one for every card in your hand. Now it just gains extra health, so it's certainly a much weaker creature. Ancient Mage... It's kind of a weird one for druids, honestly, because you do have some spell power stuff. You definitely can make use of that spell damage, but less reliably than a mage could, for instance, or even a rogue. And then you got Ravenholt Assassin, which is a good solid 7-5 stealth. I like that one a lot. That's a coup de gras creature. You can kill people pretty easily with it. It's very hard to get rid of. So we're going to grab one of those. There we go. We'll start with a bit of punch in the deck. Okay, Dark Iron Dwarf, Ironbark Protector, and Dark Scale Healer. Now, the Dark Iron Dwarf is a really good creature. There's no real doubt about that. The amount of value you get from that four mana is insane. You basically get 10 stats worth of, well, stats for four mana, which is fantastic. Only, only sucky when it's played when there isn't actually another creature on your side of the board. So definitely save it there. The Iron Bark Protector is a beast, I've got to say. It's an absolute beast. 8-8 eight, eight Taunt, very, very difficult to deal with. And it's certainly one of the staples of some of the more high-cost Druid decks. So I'm going to take one of those. All right, Dark Scale Heal, Loot Hoarder, and Power of the Wild. Loot Hoarder's not too bad. I generally like this against anything that can't kill it with a hero power. So if you do two damage with it or you trade it out for a creature, then it's a good deal. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not. Like, two mana and a card for a card is not a great trade. But if you kill a creature with it, in the process, kind of worthwhile. Power of the Wild, plus one, plus one to all your minions, or summon a 3-2 Panther. Some of the best examples of flexibility with this particular deck. So, I think we'll grab that one. There we go. Alright, Mark of Nature, Direwolf Alpha, Bloodfin Raptor. So, Bloodfin Raptor, not the best value creature ever. Admittedly, it does have the same stats as that Panther. But, you have to consider that this can be something else too. That flexibility comes with a slight price. Then you've got Direwolf Alpha, which is rock solid for what it is. 2-2 two, two with the buffs on either side. Very good if you happen to have some taunts on the field. And then we have ourselves a Mark of Nature. Not too bad. Plus 4 attack or plus 4 health with taunt for 3. It's maybe a little costly for what it does, but it can be a bit of a lifesaver. So I'm going to grab one. Shattered Sun Cleric, Chillwind Yeti, and a Druid of the Claw. Wow, these are all really good. Druid of the Claw is just insane. It's 5 cost, and you can have a 4-6 with Taunt, or 4-4 four, four with Charge. Think about that for a second. Compare it to its counterparts, such as the Fen Creeper, or the Stormwind Knight. Stormwind Knight is a 2-5 with Charge. Fen Creeper is a 3-6 with Taunt, for the same cost. Druid of the Claw is amazing value. Usually, in this instance, I would grab one of these two, because they're both really good as well. But the Druid of the Claw is just not to be messed with. It's a really good card. So, I'm gonna grab one. Mark of the Wild, Harvest Golem, and Claw. Alright, so Claw can be used as some pretty nice early game removal. I like that. It used to be comboed nicely with Savagery, but Savagery has been nerfed into the ground, so it's certainly less relevant now. Mark of the Wild is obviously a lesser Mark of Nature, as you can see right there. Arguably, at any rate. I mean, it's plus two, plus two, so in the case of Mark of Nature, you basically get plus four and taunt there, or plus four attack. So, 
It means you can at least avoid putting taunt on something that you want to do mega damage behind a taunt wall. And then, of course, you get Harvest Golem, which is just great. Everyone loves the Harvest Golem. Very hard to get rid of. Hmm, tough one. I think we'll grab ourselves a Mark of Nature. So, we've got some decent buffs so far. All right, we're speaking of that Fen Creeper. There's a great example. Look at that. I mean, look at that compared to this. Yeah. You think this is better? Huh. This is just... No. If you're playing Druid Gate, you don't take Fen Creep. As simple as that. Boulder Fist Ogre or the Reckless Rocketeer. Reckless Rocketeer certainly struggles to be good value most of the time because it dies very easily. Usually it'll kill one creature and trade it out for it. Not necessarily the best value. I do like the Boulder Fist Ogre though. A 6, 7 for 6 with nothing that can be silenced is pretty strong. A yeah. lot of punch, a lot of value in that. Voodoo Doctor, Loot Hoarder and Lord of the Arena. I'm thinking now we take that Loot Hoarder. Get a couple of smaller creatures at the start. Get a little bit of card draw on this deck since we don't really have any yet. Lord of the Arena is okay, but I prefer the taunts with the higher health amount. 6-5 can be taken down quite easily, which I don't really like. So we're going to grab that. And I didn't really even consider the Voodoo Doctor. It's a 2-1 it's a with a heal, which means it's a really bad play on turn 1. Which is not really what you want from a 1-cost minion. Ventureco Mercenary, Silverback Patriarch, Reckless Rocketeer. I still don't think I rate this all that highly. 1-4 for 3 is not, in my opinion, the best thing ever. Reckless Rocketeer we talked about earlier. And then the Venture Co. Mercenary, which is a very strange card. It's an odd one. Because it is very good for its cost. It's very good in spell-heavy decks, where you're not going to be playing a lot of minions. Because you can get this bruiser out nice and quickly. So, I think we might grab one. Alright, an Ancient of Law, a Sea Giant, and a Molten Giant. Well... Ancient of Law, I believe, actually got nerfed. It used to restore 8 health. It now restores only 5. So it's double card draw on a 5, 5 for 7, which I think is pretty decent. The rest of them are all right, too. I mean, both of these giants are not too shabby. I think we'll go with the Ancient of Law here. All right, Shield Bearer, Loot Hoarder, and a River Crocolisk. You know, I actually like the River Crocolisk. The reason I like the River Crocolisk is that an awful lot of stuff at the start of the game is 2 damage, yeah? This is really good for dealing with those pesky 2-1-1 cost minions. But in a Druid deck, you have other ways of dealing with that, like, say, hitting it. So I probably wouldn't pick it with this one, but I, I really like 2-3s. I rate 2-3s better than 3-2s most of the time, especially early game. It lets you get that board control. Loot Hoarder, though, I think we'll grab here. We'll grab yet another one of those card draws. All right. Soul of the Forest, Wild Growth, and Mad Mama. So Wild Growth lets you get a decent tempo advantage, not too shabby. Admittedly, you are paying that two mana to get it. So if you play it very early and you have one or two mana cost creatures, Wild Growth can kind of screw you over because you lose the tempo, but you can gain it back a little bit later. If you don't have creatures in your hand, in which case you probably drawn badly anyway, Wild Growth can be a useful boost. You can also combo with the coin to make sure that you can have a turn two with three health. Three mana, in fact, which is not too bad. Mad Bomber can be really good, honestly. Or it can kill all your stuff. <laughs> it can be very, very effective. But you've got to rely on the roll of the dice. Pray to Nuffle if you're going to play out a Mad Bomber. And Soul of the Forest is, it's good if you've got a lot of smaller minions, yeah, because you're getting a lot of nasty stuff out there. If you have only a small number of minions, Soul of the Forest isn't generally worth playing. We're going to take that Mad Bomber, I think. It's good. Oh, there's a tough choice. Another Iron Bark Protector, another Druid of the Claw. I think in this situation, you get another Druid of the Claw. It, it's just so good. I can't argue with it. All right, so looking at this, we're definitely lacking on the one costers there. Alright, Stormwind Champion, Silverback Patriarch, and a Novice Engineer. Don't think the Novice Engineer is quite as good as the Gnomish Inventor, which is actually a 2-4 for 4. Significantly more useful, because you can trade it better. This is okay for some early card draw as well. And then you've got that Silverback Patriarch, which I still don't really rate in terms of taunt. And then you've got the Stormwind Champion. I'm okay on taunt so far. I've got a Mark of the Wild, I've got a Mark of Nature, and I've got two Druids of the Claw and an Ironbark Protector. So my taunt is fine. I think I'll get the Stormwind Champion. Hard to argue with that one. Power of the Wild, Frostwolf Warlord, and a Druid of the Claw. I mean, honestly, I just take Druid of the Claw whenever I can. It's just so strong. It gains so much. A 4-4 charge for 5 is not bad. And a 4-6 taunt for 5 isn't bad either. I love that flexibility. I think that's what really gets the Druid going well. Now, this is a kind of a nasty choice because the Elven Archer is... It's okay, but in a deck like this where I already have... 
some removal in the form of the ability to hit something with shapeshift, Elven Archer is not that useful. It's also a 1-1 one, one for 1, which compared to, say, a... Walking Assassin, for instance, whatever the hell they call them. The stabby stabby wargans. They're 2 1 with stealth. There are other examples. Lepanome is 2 1 with 2 damage to the enemy, the enemy player when it dies. It's difficult to justify the Elven Archer in most situations, although not all. Sometimes I'll take one or two in a deck where I'm lacking one costers, which I certainly am right now, or lacking removal. Morgashin Warden is probably the best choice here just because it's a gigantic pain in the ass. Admittedly, for one cost more, you get a 4-6 instead of a 1-7. So it's a hard, hard argument to make. You know, maybe we will take the Elven Archer because we are lacking on the one costers here and we have so much taunt in this deck already. All right, River Crocolisk, Dark Scale Healer, and Elven Archer. I do like the Dark Scale Healer, especially relevant when you have a lot of taunt on the field with high health. This can keep you going way longer and give you a massive swing on the battlefield. So I think we'll take that over these other two. Yeah, River Crocolisk is not that special. Elven Archer, as we've said before, is not an amazing choice. So we'll take that Dark Scale Heal. Look at this lack of threes and fours here. We need to deal with this. All right, Ironbark Protector, Argent Squire, and Ogre Magi. We don't really have any spell damage yet, and I can't really guarantee that I'm going to get any either. Argent Squire is... I, I don't like it. It's its a 1-1 one, one with Divine Shield. It can mess with some stuff, but aside from that, it can be pretty much dead weight. But as I said, it can mess with some stuff. You can get some kind of nice trades with it. You can get a decent amount of value with it. Because of the Divine Shield, it's harder to remove. Something to consider. Okay. Yeah, we're lacking on the low cost thing. I think I'll take an Argent Squire. Okay, Blood Cell Corsair. Oh, this is actually not the worst pick ever. Ancient Watcher with a Druid is not bad because it can give it Mark of the Wild. Yeah, it can also cause silence an Ancient Watcher. You give an Ancient Watcher Mark of the Wild, suddenly that's a 6 7 with Taunt for 2. Well, technically 4, which is not bad value. The problem is, of course, you can't attack with it, so. It might not be the best thing ever. Blood Cell Corsair, I just view as a generally bad one-cost creature. Re removing one durability from the opponent's weapon is generally not a good enough battle cry. And then the Young Priestess, which I view as awesome. Yeah, we'll take the Young Priestess. We've got a lot of taunt. We can protect it behind. Cold Light Oracle, Azure Drake, and the Blood Cell Corsair. I think the Azure Drake is going to be the option here. Simply because Cold Light Oracle gives cards to the opponent. Blood Cell Corsair is not very good. Yeah, let's take that Argent Drake. All right, Innovate, Cult Master, Ironbark Protector. We need some draw. I would take it from the Cult Master, personally. We have no four-costers at all, so this is probably the best choice. I do like Innovate. It does let you, again, gain a tempo advantage there, get some costlier cards out earlier. But in this case, I think it's going to be a Cult Master. And a Legendary. Ooh, which one to pick? Okay, so we got Gruul, Deathwing, and Hogger. Gruul, I don't like that much. Mostly because he is the target of some pretty hefty removal most of the time, so we can't really get going. Deathwing is nice if you live that long, but I still feel Hogger is the best option here. And the reason I believe that is simply because it's good value. It spawns two twos with taunt. Yeah? It's a good creature. Deathwing... Deathwing is good. Deathwing is very good, but Hogger is the more practical. Usually you won't get to play Deathwing. That's the real problem with them. He's a 10 mana creature. You might not get that far in. So I think we're going to take a Hogger as our legendary there. Okay, Bloodfen Raptor, Gurubashi, Berserker, and Cult Master. I think we'll take a second Cult Master here. I like the Gurubashi Berserker. I really, really do. But it can be, unless you're like a mage or something like that, where you can guarantee damage to it, it can be a little bit unreliable. So I'm going to take that Cult Master. All right. Ooh, a Nourish. That's nice. And... In between the two other costs. Mind Control Tech can be okay. Again, a little bit random, but can be pretty good. It's still a 3-3 three, three, three for 3, which is not the worst thing ever. But again, quite situational. I think we will take that Nourish. There we go. Okay, we're definitely lacking in this area. We need to do something about that. Imp Master, Mind Control Tech, and Murloc Tide Caller. We can ignore that one. It's not a good arena card. I think we'll take our Mind Control Tech this time around, actually. Imp Master's okay, but it's generally really good in decks that have a lot of buffs with them, which I actually don't. Yeah. I need something like, say, Direwolf Alphas. I need maybe more than one Stormwind Champion. I don't rate it as a result. Mind Control Tech, on the other hand. Yeah, it's a three cost. It's situationally pretty good. 
Moonfire, waste of a card in my opinion. Dealing one damage for zero cost. It's, I need cards, I need good cards, and that just doesn't count. Then we've got Booty Bay Bodyguard, which is a 5-4. Taunt-wise, I prefer my 4-6 for 5 than the 5-4 for 5. Murloc Tidecaller, not the best because it can be quite easy to remove. However, it's still a decent two-cost creature. It's not awful, so we're going to grab one. Frostwolf Grunt, no mission venter and naturalize. All right, the Grunt, mm, probably not. A 2-2 Taunt is not that amazing, frankly. I think there are better options. Naturalize gives your opponent cards, which is not really what you want. Yes, it kills a minion, but you give them cards, which is kind of one of the universal no-nos, unless you're building a deck that's solely based on that. No mission vendor, bit of card draw, very nice. Now we probably need to focus on to low cost, but we just got a spell breaker, which is, it's the only silence I've got to get in this deck. In this case, it's like almost 100% you have to grab this card. Versus these other two, these are all so good, but the spell breaker is silence, and I don't have that in my deck yet. Okay, what does that leave us with? We've got a good spike of two there, so that's not too bad, and some decent ones as well. Savage Roar. Some buffs, not too bad. We're pretty high on the creature cost, so we've basically got no direct damage spells at all, so a Savage Roar might be a good idea. In fact, yeah, I think so. Let's grab one. And one last card. Oh, that's a bunch of weird nonsense. So, Mana Wraith, Murloc Tidecaller, and Violet Teacher. Mana Wraith, I think, got buffed. I'm pretty sure this used to be a 1-2. It's a really strange card. It completely changes the way the game runs for a little while, but it, to, as to whether or not it'll be beneficial to you, that's a different matter entirely. It's weird. And then your Violet Teacher. We do have some spells, yeah? So Violet Teacher is not the worst choice, but we don't have a lot of them. So we've got like one, two, three, four, five. Man, this Azure Drake is useless, good lord. Yeah, we've pretty much got five spells, so a Violet Teacher is, it's all right. It's a three, five, for four, which is kind of an awkward amount, so I think of these, we'll probably take the Violet Teacher. Okay, um, I'm all right with that. It's not bad. We've got some decent heavy hitters towards the end. I would have liked a second Iron Bark, but the other choices I feel were better, so. All right, let's make it happen. See how it goes. You'll notice there's some nice music in the background now from Warcraft 2. I think it's a Warcraft 1 in there as well. Either that or it's the expansion pack Dark Portal, which I actually don't think I ever owned, funnily enough. It's pretty nice. Let's see what we get. All right. Who shall we play first? Hunter! I am fighting you, Sarah the Hunter. That's confusing. All right. Not a good brawl at all. No, no, no. I think we're jacking all of those in. That is absolutely useless. We're not going to start with that. That's a little bit better. And against the Hunter, that's pretty cool because we can play a Young Priestess out first and probably not lose it, which is pretty good. All right, Young Priestess will be the opening play here. Loot Hoarder will probably follow up. It really depends on what he pulls out. If he pulls out something with one... Health, then I'll just beat it down with my hero power rather than playing another creature. Okay, he's going to open up with tracking. Fine. Cool. So that gives me free two damage on him. And... Okay. And it's... Did that draw him a card? There, there we go. All right. Looks like there was a bit of lag. Anyway, yeah. So that gives me a free two damage on him and it gets my loot hoarder out with a boost to its health. So that's good. That's really good for me. I'm happy that that happened. Cool. So that's definitely what we're going to do. We're going to play the Loot Hoarder straight away. There we go. And there we go. Two damage straight in. And that's now a 2-2 Loot Hoarder. So that's great. Awesome. So he has a card advantage, but I gain an early sort of board advantage and I can do something to him, which is nice. Let's see what he can play. Timberwolf, that's a weak play at this stage because I will be able to very easily kill it unless he's got a follow-up, which is... What's he got? Oh, Stone Tusk Boar. All right. What? Double Stone Tusk Boar. And he's going for me. What is he... He could have wiped my board with that. Why didn't he do that? That is very odd. Okay. I'm fine with him doing it, don't get me wrong. But now he's going to lose two creatures. This is pretty bad for him, actually. Alright, okay. So here's what we're going to do. First things first. We will eliminate his Timberwolf. 
doesn't really matter which I hit first, honestly. So we'll eliminate the Timberwolf. There we go. And we will then kill off one of his boars. Cool. And I will then attack him with this because I view the extra health as a little bit more valuable there. Especially if this guy has a tendency to charge directly at me for no good reason. So if he wants to trade for my young priestess, let him do that. And let me do the extra damage and let me get that extra health at the end of the turn. I think that was a very silly thing to do. If he leaves my stuff alive next turn, which would be very, very silly indeed, then I will play my Cult Master and I will get cards. Don't attack me. Don't. D don't attack me. That's silly. Don't. No. Don't. Come on. No. No. What are you? No. Attack my Priestess. It's much more valuable. All right. This is either some kind of ridiculously advanced strat or I don't even know. He's kill commanding me. Okay, so I'm being rushed down in this really weird way that probably won't work. All right, then. Okay. As you command, master. Well, uh, I, I don't even know. I think right now we just put a mark of nature on that loot hoarder and just let it go to town. Like, why not? <laughs> why bloody not? Hell, I, I could get that up to six damage and smack him with that if I wanted. Huh. Which to go for? Which to go for? Well, I've got to play something. I, I can't... I could, of course, take out his creature, but... Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe he has some master plan. I'm just really confused by what he's doing here. Alright. Actually, I don't really, really give the loot hoarder. We should give it to the priestess. That's a much, much better idea. Alright, I'm going to put the mark of nature on the priestess. Which is four health and taunt. There we go. So that's going to make it a little stronger. And then we'll use the loot hoarder to do some damage there. And then we'll attack. Alright, and if we survive next turn, then we can get that Cult Master out. So, getting lots of health on the Loot Hoarder. We're getting super value out of that Loot Hoarder, i got to say. He's doing well. And the Priestess. We've done... We've basically only played two creatures and, like, one card. And already we've got solid board control. Torn Warrior comes out. Alright. A little annoying, because that's three health. But we can deal with it. We can actually charge it down with the Druid of the Claw, if we like. And I very well might do just that. And then we can go right through him for another four damage. Or we can play the Cult Master. But if we do that, then we lose at least one creature. Which, actually, I'm kind of okay with. I'll get two cards if I do that. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that the right... No, I've already got a card advantage. I don't need to do much with that. That's fine. Charge it. Yep. There we go. So we've got a cat form with it, and we kill it. There we go. Nice and easy. And hopefully we get some more health out of it. Alright, so we are in a very solid lead right now. I wonder what his follow-up's gonna be. Yeah, advice for those who are kind of new to Hearthstone, by the way. Generally speaking, if you can trade, you should trade. Doing that kind of early damage is only good if you know you've got a follow-up. If your opponent gains an advantage... After that point. Oh, this is going to be card draw city. I'm going to love this. Okay, so I've got a couple of options here. I have in... I'm probably going to kill off two of my minions and I'm going to get three cards out of it, which gives me a significant card advantage. And we're going to kill off his big minion immediately. So this is actually going to be kind of wonderful. All right, so we'll start with the loot hoarder because I get two cards, which means I might have a good follow-up. So there we go. One card and a second card. Nice. Not too bad. And then we're going to kill off the druid. Yep. He's done his job. Yeah. He's done his job. He killed two big creatures. That's very, very nice. And then we're going to attack with the young priestess. And that leaves us with the possibility of an argent squire or armoring up. We're going to play the argent squire. There we go. All right. Very, very cool. So I'm sitting with a cult master behind a solid wall here. He could still kill commander or arcane shot it. So... It's, it's definitely a way of getting rid of it, but the Cult Master has already done well. It's got me two cards, so it's paid for itself, in my opinion. I have a significant card advantage and a lot of very nice situational cards to play. And this Priestess is proving to be an indomitable wall that is giving everyone loads of health, which is just amazing. I love... The Priestess is probably one of my favorite cards in the game. You can get so much out of that card. I absolutely love it. Get rid of its one weakness, its one health, and it suddenly becomes an absolute bloody monster. Alright, well, I'm soundly ahead at this stage. Not to say that it can't change. I have a significant card advantage, and I have a health advantage and a board advantage. I'm in the best position I could be. And playing that 
big creature earlier on didn't really win him anything. So let's see what his follow-up is. All right, Nightblade. Okay, so don't like Nightblade. Think it's a bad card, honestly. What can we do about it, though? Well, we can charge it. I mean, I can just trade it out for a Druid of the Claw if I want. Is there any better way of dealing with it? I don't want to sacrifice my Cult Master for it if I can avoid it. I can take it down to a three there. I can take it down to two with the Elven Archer. Yeah, I, mean, I can. I don't even have to lose anything here. Okay, so let's make it happen. One. Two. And three. So we don't lose that taunt. We probably will eventually, but it's, it's more than paid for itself. And then if we want to be super annoying, we play Hogger. There we go. Okay. I'm in a damn good position right now. <laughs> really, really good. It's unlikely that as a hunter he's going to be able to clear that board. There isn't... There is no hunter spell, I think, that hits everything. Alright, he's played a secret. We need to be a little bit careful. If that's an explosive trap, that's going to do a lot. So we need to be careful about that. We'll need to determine what the secret actually is. Alright, does he have a silence of any description? What's he going to do? Yeah, he's got a silence. Okay, so that's pretty annoying. So Hogger only got one spawn out of it, which means that Hogger wasn't the best value. But hey, because he... Is he dead? I could Savage Roar. He might die this turn. It depends what he's played. So what will I lose? I'm going to lose three creatures if that's an explosive trap. Is there a way for me to determine it? There is. There very much is. So it might be a snipe. Let's find out if it's a snipe or not. I'm going to make it go bear form. It's not a snipe. Okay, it's probably an explosive trap. Let's do the mathematics on this. So I'm gonna lose which which heroes are, which are gonna stay alive, basically. He'll stay alive, Hogger will stay alive. And that's actually it, isn't it? So that's four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's not ideal. But it's not bad either. And I'm gonna get a ton of cards out of it as well. All right, let's do that. Okay, so if it's not a one of those traps, then we're fine. It is a trap. Okay, explosive trap. All right, so that's wiped out most of my creatures, but not all of them. And I am getting a million cards from that. Stack up these attacks right here. Actually, he does die. I keep forgetting because that actually gave... Am I not going to be able to do these attacks? There we go. So he does die. I keep forgetting. That actually gives your main character that as well, so... Well, I mean, I guess that worked out alright. I can't really complain about how that went. We were in control pretty much the entire game. So, nothing to complain about. Alright, let's queue up for another. I have a feeling it was a little bit new, honestly. Definitely not one of the better players that I've had a chance to play. Those early charges could have really given him an advantage. He could have eliminated my creatures quite quickly. He could have killed the Loot Hoarder. He could have killed the Priestess very, very quickly, but he chose not to do that, which I view as a mistake. If he had done that, he would have been in a much better spot, but allowing that Priestess to live the entire game and allowing that Loot Hoarder to do so much clearly didn't work out so well for him. So do bear that in mind if you're playing this particular game. All right, a Warlock. Let's see how this one goes. Again, not a great start. I think we're going to need to toss some cards here, like all of them. There we go. Could have maybe kept hold of the Spellbreaker. That might have been a good idea. All right, better options. Okay, here's hoping you play something on turn one, because then I'll coin Mad Bomber. I don't really like to coin Power of the Wilds, because, you know, hey, it's a 3-2, but it's a 3-2 with no bonus. Ah, he's not playing anything. I don't want to coin Mad Bomber. I think we're just... We'll coin Panther. Alright. I don't necessarily like that doing that because I prefer the buff, but... It's still a 3-2 on the board. Then if you play something next turn, I could play Mad Bomber. It might kill my Panther. It might not kill my Panther. It's statistically not likely to completely kill my Panther. Ooh, alright. So that's... Kind of bad news. Ooh. Okay, that's nice. So, Young Priestess is an option here. Yeah, we might go Young Priestess, because that's going to get that up to 3-3. Three, three. It means there isn't a straight-up trade. If it decides to attack, then I can Mad Bomber next turn and probably kill it without losing the Panther. So, I'm going to go with that. 
usually I'd say, hey, trade, trade. But in this case, it I think there is a, a better longer term play. So he's probably going to use that to kill that. Is he going to buff it? Oh, he's going to buff it. Okay, that's not great news. Oh, he's going to kill the panther. All right. Fine. Well, then Ah, now this unfortunately sucks because Mad Bomber is likely to kill my Priestess. So it's possible that it won't, but... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill the Priestess on the Shattered Sun Cleric, and then Mad Bomber is hopefully going to do work. Go, Mad Bomber! Kill both of them! Yes, one, two... Oh, why didn't you kill the one that did more damage? This is what I get for trusting Mad Bomber. That could have been a great play if the fates had been in my favor. As it stands, I'm about to take a hit for six, which is not good. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Well, at least I know I can kill it next turn, but that was rubbish. Trusting in Mad Bomber was a mistake. Alright. Spellbreaker available. I can shut down that taunt if I want. But I think I'm just going to trade Mad Bomber across for it, honestly. I don't have a lot of options. So I think we trade Mad Bomber. And then we just get rid of that and leave his 2-4 alive. I don't see that many options at this point. Not being able to spend mana on turn four is lousy. All right, I'm very clearly behind right now. Thankfully, I do have Hogra, and I've got my Spellbreaker just in case he plays something crazy. I can also Spellbreak my own Venture Co. Mercenary if I like, but that's a bit of a waste of the silence. Sense Demons, so he now has a card advantage on me. Let's see what he's got to play. Blood Imp. Ugh, nasty little thing. Double Blood Imp, even worse. Do I have any AoE? Nope. So they're going to sit on the board most likely the entire game, which is awful. Okay. All right. So what do we got plays wise? I think we're going to have to mercenary. I really do. There's nothing else that's really great to play right now. I can't target either of those guys. I could go Druid of the Claw for a 4-6, but it's going to take ages to kill that. Venture Co. Mercenary is a big threat. So it's going on the board. Let's see what we can do with it. Now, if he shows no sign of killing it, I could spell break it next turn. Oh! Oh! Ouch, ouch, ouch. This is going incredibly badly. This is a disaster. I think I'm dead, actually. I mean, look at what he's got on the field, and I can't do anything about it. I think next play is probably going to end up being Hogger, because there's nothing else I can do. Just get that taunt out, but it's not going to help, I don't think. So we're desperate for survival right now. All right, Hogger is out. It's not going to make much of a difference. They, you can knock that down very quickly and easily. This is bad news. Do I even have a follow-up to this? I mean, what's my plan after this? Oh, God, he plays... He's got everything he could possibly need. I mean, how could he have better draw? Ugh. All right, so Murloc doesn't even die from that, but he gains a plus one. And now he's just going to sacrifice that, gain another plus one. Now, what's he going to trade for it? Yep, trade the big game hunter for it. And he still has five creatures on the field. <laughs> okay, so we can spell break that next turn. Acidic Swampoos comes out as well. I have... I just... I have no board clear. I was never offered a single swipe. That's the real problem here. If I had something like a swipe, I'd be in business. But I was never offered one during the draft. That's the big weakness of the deck. Oh, okay. So I think we just have to spell break the ghoul. I mean, I don't see any other option, honestly. I could put up a 4-6, but it's going to die immediately, and it's not even going to trade properly for the ghoul, and then he just hits me for a bazillion points of damage. So, all right, spell break the ghoul, which leaves us with three. So I could use Savage Roar here, and I could attack, which would not kill a damn thing. So I think what we're just going to do is take the Murloc out at this point. There we go. Oh, this is dire. Well, the only hope is I can kind of try... Well, I should survive until I get my Ironbok Protector out. And then maybe I can start to turn the tides a bit. But playing for survival right now. He's going to trade the Ooze for the Spellbreaker, I'd imagine. Oh, man. Did that just kill me? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No, it didn't. It did not. He discarded the remainder of his hand, though, so... I can play my Iron Bark right now, and that will keep me alive. I, it's not going to keep me alive long enough. He's going to attack with both of those. Yeah, I'm dead. 
So he can very easily overwhelm it. Life taps again. Yep, five. Six, seven, eight. Yeah, I'm dead, GG. That was the wrong button. Yep, no way out of this one. That was pretty bad. I got absolutely murdered. That did not go well at all. Alright, let's give it another bash. Wasn't even close, really. I mean, he had all the answers. So here's hoping I don't go up against another deck that has a bunch of nasty, quick-to-play stuff in it, because this deck is... It's not that weak to rush down, because I can get the taunts, but even then... In that situation where he's got a board advantage, you have no clear, what are you going to do? You're just going to progressively die by the time you get your Ironbark Protector out. You're probably going to be destroyed, so... Yeah, he, he played that well. And... Alright. A priest. Oh, Merlock Tide Hunter to start with. Not bad, not bad. Keep the Spellbreaker. Jack in the Dark Scale Healer, see if we can get another early play. We didn't, but we got our Hogger. Okay. Alright, so Merlock Tide Hunter as a coin play is not the worst thing ever. It gets two creatures out in turn one. You can't really argue with that. It's not bad. One of the only cards that can really do that outside of the Defias nonsense, so it's alright. Nor the fact that the Tide Hunter is, of course, worse than the Defias significantly. That's what annoys me so much about Defias, but right now it's maybe the only thing propping the rogue up. Okay, so let's coin the play. There we go. I think that's a good solid start. Don't have a problem with that. Alright, so priests are pretty weak at the start of the game because you can't really use your hero power for anything. It's gonna mind blast me. Alright, whatever. Doesn't actually, it doesn't affect the state of play in any real way. Might come back to bite me later, of course, but such is the way of things. Alright, so we're gonna do damage to him. And we'll get some armor as well, so get a little bit of health. There we go. So I pretty much just mind blasted him and I maintain board control. Now, we also know that Priest AoE is fairly weak. The only Priest AoE he's really going to have would be a Holy Nova, which he gets on turn 5, not turn 3. So getting rid of Weenies initially is a bit difficult. He's going to Holy Smite that one. Okay. So it leaves me with that little Murloc, and he's going to heal himself. All right. So we can give the Murloc a buff, but it's... Oh, man, I'm actually getting some really bad draws here. I don't have any good two costs to play, or even three costs. Elven Archer is a bad play right now because doing one damage to him, he's not going to care. Savage Raw is a terrible play. Mark of Nature, I could make that a 5-1, yeah? Because he's used some removal already. So I can start actually piling on some serious pressure with it. Usually it's a pretty awful play, but since he just used his Holy Smite, I have a feeling I might be able to get away with it. So we're going to do that. That's now a 5-1 Murloc, and I just hit you in the face with it. If he can't remove it this turn, then he's actually going to be a bit of trouble. Let's see if he's got anything. Does he have a taunt? Even if he has a taunt, I may be able to trade it well. I'm betting on him not having another direct damage spell. And as a priest, that's not a bad bet. Wolf Rider. Okay. I'm kind of alright with him trading that for that. That's alright. That puts me ahead. Cool. So it wasn't a bad play after all, really. <sighs> the cards that I've got in my hand kind of suck for this situation. That's what really bothers me. But we're going to play the Elven Archer out. I hate doing this. I really do because that's really to be used for removal purposes. But in this case, it's better to play a creature than not. And I'm certainly not playing my Spellbreaker. So I've got really, really bad cards in my hand right now until I get to turn six because I just, I can't take advantage of what's going on on the board right now. All right, well, he's got a 5-4. I've got an Azure Drake, which trades with that, and I draw a card from it, so that's probably the best play. Savage Roar is not going to kill that as much as I wish otherwise. I could Savage Roar and then hit him as well, but I will also take a bunch of damage in the process, so I think we'll play the Azure Drake. I'm okay with it. I don't really have anything that can really benefit from spell power anyway. So if he wants to trade that out, fine. If he doesn't, I'll trade it for him. I could even use the Mark of the Wild to buff it so it actually survives the attack. Iron Bical, actually irrelevant because I don't have any spell power cards. So that's fine. Light Spawn coming up. That just got buffed, by the way. So that's pretty good. Need to watch out for that. You can silence it, which kind of... I think that turns into a 0-5, actually. So we may end up silencing it. 
All right, options. What do we got? So we'll probably go for the straight trade with this guy. And then we will silence that and just leave it alone and trade the thing out for that. So that might work. Uh, we can Savage Roar, which is not really going to be that beneficial, I feel. Or we can go for the charge play. We could. I think we're just going to go for this silence. There we go. So we're going to silence him, which makes him a 0-5, which currently makes him useless. We still have a Mark of the Wild, so I think maybe, just maybe, we actually do play that Mark of the Wild here. And we turn this into a 6-6 six, six Taunt. And then we kill that, and then we trade that for the Owl, which leaves us with a bit of an advantage. Unfortunately, it is 6-1, so it's likely to die. Now, next turn, we can Hogger if we need to. We've got Stormwind Champion. If these guys stay alive, I'll probably Stormwind Champion because that's better value in terms of the amount of attack damage I'm going to get out of these guys. If I get a swing out of this, then it's... Ah, another Wolf Rider. Man, he gets those at just the right time, doesn't he? All right, so that's that dead. And that's a little annoying as well there. Okay, options, options. So we can charge that. But we're still going to lose it unless we uh, want to hit it. And I actually kind of do want to hit it. So I'm thinking we charge it. It's either that or we play Hogger. Which I don't think we need to play right now. Ancient of Law, we don't need to play that either. We can we can save that to later. So we're going to charge through the Claw. Which is going to result in this going down. That kills that. And then we get a straightforward damage. Now I'm relying on him not having yet another charge in his hand. And bear in mind, I still have a card advantage, and now I have a board advantage. So things are going okay. He's on 8-8. He can mind control, but neither of these guys on the field are perhaps worthy of that. This light spawn's just sitting there doing nothing. So unless he gets an inner fire, that light spawn's not going to be able to do anything. If he gets an inner fire, it's going to be right back on the field. Let me guess, it's an inner fire, isn't it? Oh, it's Temple Enforcer. That doesn't do anything. <laughs> but it's still a 6-6, so something to consider. This guy isn't going to do anything unless he gets an inner fire, and then he's going to be a monster. Okay, options. What do we got? I think maybe we hogger now and we start doing damage. He only has one thing on the board that can do damage. We can do eight damage to him this turn. Alternatively, we do have Savage Roar, which takes us up to what? 6, 12, 14. Hmm. Shame we don't have any more charge. Yeah, I think we're going to hogger. Play it a little bit safe, play out a little bit longer, and armor up, of course, and then we're going to attack for nine. There we go. So Hogger's going to put down his taunt, and then next turn, if I keep two of my creatures alive, I can Savage Roar and end it. So let's see what he's got. As I said, unless he has yet another charge or a way of getting rid of that taunt, that 6-6 six, six Enforcer isn't going to do a damn thing. So we're in a good spot. Mind Control's Hogger. Okay, whatever. That's not going to win you the game. Because I have Savage Raw in my hand. So, he's just burned pretty much everything he's got. So, he's dead. Actually, no, he's not. Because that's he just brought a taunt out with that. Can I kill him anyway? Yes, I can. I can kill him anyway. Doesn't matter. So, Savage Raw. And then we just rile up for that attack. Down he goes. And then he is dead. GG, well played. Alright, solid. Can't complain about that. That went really well. Not bad. Yeah, that, that went as well as I could have expected. I got the kind of momentum that I was hoping for, and he didn't get any of his crazy priest stuff. Like, right now, I feel the Northshire Cleric is one of the best cards in the game. One cost, one three with draw on every heal. It's just insane! It's really good, and thankfully he didn't have any of those. So that early stuff that the priest can kind of do to gain that momentum just didn't happen. <laughs> Could this be a worse start? <laughs> That's terrible. Good lord. Let's toss those away. Let's see if we can get anything better. I pretty well hope so. We can't. This is actually worse. All right. So here's hoping we pull a card we can actually use. And we don't. All right. So we skip our turn one, but at least we have a play for turn two. All right. Bastalara. You horrendous paladin pig dog. What have you got? All right, that will be the Mower Tide Hunter play. There we go. So we've got Mind Control Tech for turn three. I don't like using it in that scenario, but I feel it's better to play it than not. Unless he plays a 1-1 that I can use my hero power to get rid of. Light Warden. That's a big risk. We want to watch out for that thing. Thankfully, we can eliminate it very safely without worrying too much. 
So I think, let's see, yeah, we're not going to play the mind control tech. We're just going to hit it, and then we're going to kill it with our weak little Murloc here. And then we're going to attack with a 2-1. There we go. It's a better bet. The last thing you want to do is let a Light Warden get out of control. Light Warden's got buffed in the patch, and they're really, really good now. Basically, whenever a character gets healed, which includes you, by the way, it gets plus two attack permanently. If you can toss... I play them in Priest decks. If you toss a Power Word Shield on that, that is a very powerful creature. All right. Gnomish Inventor, I think, is the play here. That's actually an ideal play right now. Gets us a card. Gets us a 2-4 on the board. Yeah, we lose the Murloc. Whatever. Not going to trade directly here. I'm going to attack. And then if he wants to trade, he can trade. If he decides not to trade, I'll kill it next turn. Yep, solid, solid play. But it's better than me attacking it directly because that would be a waste of two damage. So consider... Oh, that's nasty. Wow. Ouch. Consider what your opponent's going to do. Consider the opponent's mindset at that stage. All right, well, this is awkward. A Druid of the Claw with Taunt is probably the best play. Dark Scale Healer with nothing on the board is not good value. Mind Control isn't going to help. Violet Teacher isn't really going to help. We don't have any spells in the hand. So yeah, we're going to play a Druid of the Claw with Taunt. Charging it makes no sense because then it's a straight trade. I've got more chance of getting a good trade out of it with a Taunt. Because, you know, if it hits into that wall, that's fine. It goes down to one health. And then I can hit it with my hero power and that leaves my bear alive with three which makes a hell of a lot more sense if i charge it then it just charges back and it's a straight trade all right silverhand knight comes out so options for next turn we could do yet another bear or we could do we can't mind control tech which is unfortunate or we can hogger hogger gets me more taunt of course which is not bad hmm we may be Hogger. The alternative being that I play that and I'll still lose my stuff, so. Hmm. Yeah, that's not going to work out. So I think perhaps we Hogger. Yeah, let's Hogger. All right. I think the correct course of action here is not, not to attack... Mm. Usually I don't attack with taunts. For obvious reasons. I'd rather him be able to do that, but maybe losing that 4-4 might be a good idea. Okay, so we'll definitely lose the bear next turn, but we got rid of the 4-4. And he'll probably attack with that, which means I can eliminate it with a hero power next turn. Ah, oh, freaking owl. Okay. Oh, Defender of Argus coming out. That's bad news. All right, so I'm actually going to lose both my taunts here. That went badly. I think I made the wrong decision there. Okay, this suddenly got really ugly really quickly. All right, options. What have we got? Mind Control Tech might get me the 4-2, but it could also get me a bunch of rubbish stuff. It might still be the best play, though. So RNG to the wind. The 4-2. Nice. Not bad. All right. Leaving us with what options? Violet Teacher, Cult Master, or we can kill something. And I think we're going to kill something. Yeah. Hero power. Maybe I should have played the Cult Master instead, because I'm definitely going to lose something next turn. Alright. Leaving us with what options? Argus will kill that next turn. Hogger can kill Argus. And maybe stay alive. I think I've got a slight advantage. But this stuff is going to die very easily. He's about to get card draw as well. And I'm not going to get that. Ooh. Puts the Argent Protector on that as well. Alright, so he's going to gain a card out of it. Okay, so what advantage I had just got pissed away. Okay, what are the options? Ventrico Mercenaries available. We could play another Heavy Taunt. I might just play the Heavy Taunt. Hogger is... Hmm. Let's see. Don't want to play that Heavy Taunt or do I... Maybe a lighter Taunt. Not use all of my mana. 
Because I can taunt and then kill off that little beastie there before it can really do anything. So... Yeah, it's Druid of the Claw for 4-6. It's not bad. Leaving us with 3. So, what do we do? Well, probably use that to hit that. Then we will... Oh, God, I'm giving him cards. Alright, we got to get rid of that now. I'll take the hit and kill it and trade it with Hogger. I can't give him any more cards. I should have done that previously. I'm stupid for doing that. I thought I could have thought, oh, should I leave it alive and then just realize how stupid that was. So I just gave him a card I shouldn't have given him. So that was a bad play. Oh no, not a blessing of kings. Anything but that. That's going to make its way through the bear. If he's able to do one damage to the bear, that's going to keep it alive as well. That is... I tell you, that can be useful. That can be a good card. All right. Thankfully, it doesn't look like it's got a follow-up. So at least he's going to lose that card. So he used a... No, I think maybe it was. All right. Okay, down you go. Loot hoard a follow-up. Okay, so I have a card advantage and I can extend that card advantage. By playing my cult master. Uh, things are fairly even right now. All right, Nourish. Maybe I don't have to play my Cult Master. I've got a Nourish card, so that might even change things around entirely. I think right now, Ironbark Protector, actually. That's going to shut down anything he's going to throw at me for a while, so let's go with that. There we go. All right, and in this case, because I have a Taunt of, I'm just going to go for the straight attack. Let's hope he doesn't have another Blessing of Kings. Hmm. What's he got? I'm interested. I'm intrigued. This game's going long. I've got a lot of options in my hand still. The Dark Scale Healer might be very useful. Ooh, that's an ugly one. Very ugly one. I don't rate that as a particularly good creature, but that can kill my Ironbark Protector. However, it doesn't matter because I'm just going to trade it anyway, so I'm, there's no way I'm letting him do that. Absolutely not. I have my Mind Control guy that can do the job. Is there any useful follow-up here? So Dark Scale Healer isn't going to help in this situation. Violet Teacher followed by a Nourish. Would be pretty good. We could play the Venturco Mercenary. We've got a lot of cards. I don't think we need to Nourish right now. So I think maybe we Violet Teacher Venturco Mercenary. Actually, no. Vi Vent yeah, let's play... No, don't play that first, jackass. Play the Azure Drake. Or we can play the Cult Master. That's not bad. I'm going to get at least one card out of it. Probably more. Yeah, let's play the Cult Master. Because the amount of cards that... He's going to have to throw a lot at that. So we then trade that for that. And I think we just then attack him, honestly. We just hit him. Hit him with the Iron Bark. Let him... If he wants to ram three creatures into that, he is more than welcome to. I got a, I got a lot of stuff in my hand. He's in a good amount of trouble, I feel. Storm and Champion. So he can kill it with two cards. Two creatures. That's that's pretty good for him. And then he's going to be able to kill the Cult Master. Oh, wow. He's going to just kill it with one. That was unexpected. Well, at least I'm going to get a card out of it. So that's my second card. So that's value. Spellbreaker. All right, he did pretty well there. But I have a massive card advantage. I just need to get rid of that Stormwind Champion. And I can do that. Okay, so that needs to go down pretty quickly. The best way we're going to do that... Oh, we have a lot of options. I can charge it down. But I'll, I'll lose the creature in the process. Which is not the best thing ever. I can buff that and kill it with that. But... Hmm. What's the best way to kill it? I've got a lot of cards and that's confusing me. But I need rid of it. Because you can't leave a Storm and Champion out in the field against a Paladin. It's... it's Oh, absolutely not. No, no, no. Spellbreak isn't going to help too much. I think we just charge it with this Drake. And we just kill it. Simple as that. So, that's what we're going to do. Mark of Nature, plus four on the attack right there. And then we kill that off. What do we want to follow it up with? We could just play the taunt. Yeah, let's play heavy taunt. There we go. Bear form on the taunt right there. And down you go. And then we can... Kill something. I'm going to kill that. There we go. Maybe she would have killed the 2-1, but I didn't want to give him that extra card at the start of his turn, so... 
Not that it's really going to make a huge amount of difference, but I'd rather just not have as many options. Guardian of Kings! Alright, so this game's going long. <laughs> but that's that's not going to help him that much. I, he hasn't got card draw. He just gained one card out of that, but that's about it. I'm in a really good spot right now. But he's still playing a bunch of powerful stuff that I need to keep an eye on. I can't really allow this to run away. So, options. I've got too many creatures in my hand to justify the Venture Co. Mercenary, I think, at this stage. So I think Stormwind Champion Loot Hoarder, probably the best bet. Yep, I think so. There we go. Alright. Well, if he want to run, run himself into that, then he's more than welcome. I can't kill it this turn, so I see no reason to go after it. Right, he may be gaining some of his momentum back, and that's what I don't like. I need more stuff on the field. Venture Code Mercenary is not going to help me in that regard. Ooh, stabby stabby. And I don't have any taunt, actually, so that's going to be a real problem. Other Ring Farseer comes out, heals that up. Even nastier. Not pleasant. I can still kill it, but I'll take more damage than I wanted to. Alright, so things turn around. He's got the upper hand right now. This 3-2 is not going to do what I hoped it would do. Alright. I'm fresh out of taunt. Bad news. Very bad news. What is the play? I think we trade that for that and we just get some stuff off the board right now. I hate the fact that that's then going to be killed by that. That's just unpleasant. Oh, hang on. No, it won't. I could restore five health to it with the Ancient of Law. As weird as it is, I could do that. I kind of force him to kill that off with that. That might work. That might work. Okay, well, let's see what card we get. Elven Archer. All right. Can't do much with that. Okay. I'm not sure if that was the best idea ever, but... Probably wasn't the worst either. Armor up. There we go. All right, so I'm going to take a hit. Unless he decides to trade. If he reveals this, I suddenly have six, 14 points worth of damage on the field. So I think maybe that was the right call. Yeah, that's a big threat, but he can't kill me yet. He's forced to trade. Magashan Warden comes out. I still have a significant card advantage. What I don't have is Taunt, which could be problematic. And he's also trying to flood the board. So I've got to watch out for that. Mad Bomber could be value here. Could be very good value. All right. Almighty Bomber, hallowed be thy RNG. Please, please do what I say. Why, Bomber, what are you doing No. Oh, why? The chances of that were astronomically low. <sighs> All right, okay, fine. <sighs> Damn it. Right, well, we spell break that, which makes it pretty much useless. And then it leaves us with what? I think we play Violet Teacher. And then we start knocking creatures out one at a time. Trade that for that. There we go. I think actually, screw it. We just go for him. He has no damage potential on the field. Why even waste the time? Arjun Commander comes out to kill that. I still have damage on the field. And that's going to trade easily. Now he kills the Mad Bomber. Okay. Alright, maybe not. He's definitely still in this, but he... Okay, let's see what we can do. Alright, I think we nourish now for extra creatures. Yeah. So we're going to draw three cards. There we go. So that gets me a creature, and it gives me three of those. Can I kill him with Savage Roar this turn? Can I kill him with Savage Roar and Power of the Wild this turn? So that's going to be what? Six, seven, seven plus six, 
Yes, he's dead. Sup, son. GG. That was a good back and forth. <laughs> I said that game was going long. I wasn't really kidding. That was a, a nice little back and forth there. That was fun. I like that. All right. Sounds like a good time to wrap up. Three wins to one loss so far with the Druid deck, folks. It's going pretty well. Let's see if I am able to get past my horrible 3-3 mental barrier. My name is Total Biscuit, and I am Lord of the Arena. I'll see you next time.